the, the basic argument I make is that these promises of a just transition, they just make it easier for people to say, yes, we should implement these policies. They allow you to ignore some of the costs, to pretend that those costs don't exist. I take issue with the sort of simplicity of it all. Okay, we can just bring this in, we'll decide who shuts down when, we'll have a nice little plan, we'll move people around as needed to fill the jobs that we need, and everybody will have a nice uh, transition to retirement as we smoothly transition this industry away. And, and the point that I make in the book is where we've done this before, we've done it in very specific circumstances. Small industry, so 2,000 coal workers in Ontario or, or in Alberta, 19,000 cod and related cod fishers and, and related employment in Newfoundland and Labrador was a big deal. But you know, that's an order of magnitude smaller than the oil and gas industry. We've done it in industries that were already in steep decline and that already had had lots of government intervention to keep them afloat. So as a government, you're like, do I want to keep spending money to keep it afloat or do I want to help the workers out? You know, we just had the last two years have been each record profits and record royalties and record government revenues, et cetera. Not record employment, but the oil and gas industry isn't that. And so the big thing I take issue with in the chapter of, you know, I said it's not that simple, is the, the theme. But, you know, stop telling yourself that you can make this happen in the way that you're telling yourself you can. Um, and I'll, can I pick up on one more just for... Yeah, sure. No way. So I, I'm writing this book, and I have all my chapter planned out and everything else, and I'm driving along in my car, and I hear CBC Radio, and they say, well, coming up after the news, we have a story of a major oil and gas uh, producing country that has you know, found a way to transition away from oil and gas to renewable energy and keep their workers and, and eliminate cost to workers. And I thought, well, this will be interesting. So I'm sitting in my car... It was, wasn't idling, I promise. Um, but uh, sitting in my car listening to this, I'm like, who is this major oil and gas producer? And it turns out it's Denmark. I'm like, Denmark? Okay, and you know, that, that's really, to me, is like the perfect example of this. Because yes, Denmark did transition and is in the process of transitioning away from oil and gas, but their oil and gas production has been declining for decades. It's a relatively small part of their economy. Um, it's nowhere near comparable to the industry that we have here, but it makes for a nice soundbite because the same area that was the hub of the offshore oil industry is now the hub of the wind energy industry. And it's right there and it's in the same place. And I think that's the last piece that I talk about a lot is, yeah, we might have solar jobs in Alberta, but we're not going to have them in Fort McMurray, right? We might have, and, and we talk about these things in a way that we would never talk about. You, know, you wouldn't pat someone on the back in Ottawa after their like, tech job was lost and say, but don't worry, I hear the auto industry in Windsor is hiring. But we absolutely do. But there's lots of solar in Alberta. Yeah, have you driven from Fort McMurray to Lethbridge? It's a long, long, long way. And I think that's the, the disconnect I, I pick up on the book, in the book as well. 